Welcome to this video where we're going to review the 1-0 victory that Birmingham City got over Swansea City. Um, obviously that was a penalty by Scott Hogan late in the day where we also missed a penalty quite early in the game which was at that point looking quite key and very important. But first we're going to have a vi video from Total Swans TV, a friend of mine on Twitter and in the Gaffer community. Um, as you can see, this is his YouTube channel and here is his Twitter account. So the links to those will be in the description. So take it away, Tom. That's it, the game has just ended at St Andrews, Birmingham City won, Swansea City nil. Swansea just not with it tonight again, uh, hoping that the international break, you know, we've come back, recharged, uh, reformed, sort of, you know, reset and ready to push on for the final nine games of the season. And for the first 10, sort of 15 minutes of the first half of that game, we looked okay, we looked decent, we had the first couple of opportunities in the game. Uh, conceded a penalty earlier on, uh, which Freddie Woodman saved from Jukovic. And then we just completely lost track of the game. Um, it all went downhill from there on our right through until the end of the game. Swans just weren't with it tonight. We've got no plan B at the moment. It's either use the wing backs in attack or there's nothing else. Um, and I think the frustration from the fans is massively showing, uh, especially after tonight's game on social media. We've just not been with it. Uh, and credit to Birmingham, they sussed us out. They had, they had their game plan and they executed it to perfection. They got very lucky, I think, in the second half with the, the second penalty. But even if the Swans had picked up a point tonight, it wouldn't have been deserved. They just weren't with it. Uh, and credit to Birmingham and all the very best to them in their fight for relegation battle this season. Uh, I really do hope they stay up. And I don't really know what else to say about the Swans tonight. Just not with it. And we're really going to struggle now to try and get into those top two come the end of the season. So playoffs maybe if we're very lucky thanks for that feedback tom and good luck for the rest of the season now on to my review of the game so now we have our normal backing on to my review of the one nil versus swansea city at home so looking over the stats and the way that we played we did deserve a victory for me um we had more shots more shots on target more fouls, uh, more big chances created. They didn't have one. Uh, we obviously missed a penalty. And our long ball percentage and crosses were better than them. The dribbles were better than them. We, we just outright played better than them. We deserved a victory. We we looked like we wanted it more. Simple, from, one of the, from this stat tells me that we wanted the victory more than they did. Uh, the aerials won being 42 out of... No, sorry, we won 42 and they won 23 aerial duels. And that's just a stat that shows the passion of the club trying to win the ball in the air. This victory has taken us to six points clear of Rotherham. They do have those games in hand. They do have four games in hand. But that's now them having to get points from at least three of those games. To be above us they need to win two and draw one of their games in hand to catch up with us so now we we have put a bit of um a bit a bit of space between us two we've obviously gone above coventry two points ahead of them uh they do have a game in hand as well but pushing ourselves up there we can only do what we can do and that victory is huge as a couple of days ago i did a prediction video where i think i said we would get nine points or 10 points um, and that was out that was with getting zero points in this game so that's three three points already on the way to my points total prediction uh, we're up to 41 points uh, the majority of people were predicting about 45 to 47 ish points to, for safety so you'd be about six points five points off that so yeah you, you, six five four ish points so you're looking at possible three, four games we need to get points out of out of our last games. So on to this game. Um, my man of the match was Hartley Dean. Now, 
get his stats up. Harley Dean's passing was better than I'd seen it in quite a long time. He got four clearances. He won one out of one of his ground duels. He won five out of nine of his aerial duels. Um, he blocked one shot. I feel like well, that's 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 the stats that need to be said. Yeah, he he did lose the ball eleven times, but you can see that all that space for once he did spend more time in our half than theirs. And for a heat map for Harley Dean, you normally see him up here. And the fact that he stuck back against a team like them when we have three at the back worked really well. And that's another thing for Lee Bowyer. Um, he completely counteracted how they played by playing the way they played against them. And tactically, that was a very clever way to go about it. We played the wing backs against their wing backs. And it completely stopped both Bidwell and Roberts from being able to do what they do. To uh, to most other teams in the division, Bidwell and Roberts have demolished them. And that's been the reason that Swansea are beating teams and sitting why they are sitting in third in the table, winning 20 of their games and only losing 9. Because Connor Roberts and Bidwell and Jake Bidwell are the two main hubs of their team that get make all of the chances they just weren't able to do much Harley Dean had Andre Ayew on lockdown throughout that 90 minutes period um, Etheridge played really well um, Mark Roberts played well Pedersen played well everyone played well on our team um, Juki obviously other than the penalty miss, he played quite well. Um, he had f he won seventeen of his twenty-two aerial duels, winning one of six of his ground duels. Um, Thirty-one percent pass accuracy isn't too bad for him. Two shots on target. Obviously, one of those being a penalty. Uh, he got f fouled once. He created chances, and he was there all match. So even though he missed the penalty, he still played quite well. Um, Alan Halilovic behind him, opening up his stats, attempting two dribbles, completing two dribbles. Sixty percent of his passing accurate was accurate. Six out of ten, half his crosses were accurate. Half his ground duels he won. Got fouled twice. I mean, these players are playing really well. Obviously, even down to Hogan being brought off the bench. He lost the ball four times, but he had that one shot. And that penalty was different to how he'd been playing the whole of the rest of the game. Because even though he was only on the pitch for what eight minutes, it says there, he he lost the ball multiple times. He looked a bit clumsy, but as soon as he stepped up to that penalty, you knew he weren't missing. You knew he wasn't going to miss. You, when Juki stepped up to his penalty, you panicked. You thought, I'm not too sure about this, and then he ran straight up. Hogan ran at a right at, at the proper angle, put the ball right into the bottom corner with pace and power. And that was the way the keeper went. So, the, f the faith in Hogan's penalty is definitely still there. I thought Sunyik had a bit of an iffy game. His long ball percentage low. His passing percentage low for him. His duels won were a bit low. I, I didn't think he had a great game. Uh, he was probably one of the worst players. Uh, seeing Steve Seddon for 45 minutes. Now, that's, that, that's something that is nice to see. Steve Seddon gets some time out there on the pitch. Um, play 45 minutes. Yeah, he got brought off at half-time for tactical reasons. Um, basically to stop him getting a red card. But 45 minutes experience for a player of his quality, of his level, of his age. Championship level against teams that are trying to get promotion is huge 
and he 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 was up to the task. He, over fifty percent of his passing, winning it. He's one out of one out aerial duel. He's, he lost his ground duel, but long balls, half of them crosses, half of them. He he played really well in that half, but she was given time. Everything about this performance was great. Being underdogs, coming out with a victory. Um, and them coming into it with their form was certainly a positive for us. <laughs> As their form wasn't great, but a massive, massive step towards safety. Massive step towards safety with that victory. So, thank you for watching this video, guys. We're on to the final straight. We now have Brentford away in the next game. In three days. So, this is back to the uh, game by game by game by game basis. Um, after this game, if I'm not mistaken, are we playing? We are playing Stoke and then Rotherham. See, that three match spell, like I said on my previous videos, um, Stoke, then Rotherham, then Forest spell is going to be quite important. And then the Derby game. Those are the f form of the most important games for the rest of the season. We weren't looking at Swansea as a must win. We came out of it with three points. If we can beat Rotherham after getting those three points against Swansea, going six points clear of Rotherham, if we can beat Rotherham, then we're nine points totalish clear of them, possibly at that point, if we equal what they do until then. Are they going to get nine points more than us, even with four, point, four games in hand? That's going to be difficult for them. That's going to be difficult. That patch just before us, when they play us, is the important, most important time of the season. Because they have, if we're going to Rotherham, in the week that they play us, they have Coventry, QPR, and Huddersfield within the week before they play us. In seven days, they play those three games and us. Those three games will tell us what we need to do against them because if they lose all three games, we could be six points ahead of them still. But if they win a couple and then we beat them, we're still ahead of them. If they don't get points from three of those and winning, winning two of those at that point, then we will be ahead of them by the game. Also, they do have Wickham next, so if Wickham are, <laughs> as mad as it sounds, if Wickham are to survive, they need to win that game. And now, we will have our look at Blues' top goal scorer. There he is. He's now into seven goals. So he's now three goals off those double figures. Which is definitely <laughs> would be a positive outcome based off where we were not two months ago really. We weren't looking at double figures. So double figures would be good. And uh, if he gets into double figures, we probably should be staying up. And now I would say we should be staying up anyway. I'd say Huddersfield are probably pushing themselves now and into more pressure than us. But anyway, thank you for watching this long video. Um, please make sure to give it a like. Comment down below. In the description will be Tom's links. Um,